Hello, welcome to my channel and happy new week to you. The end bad government nationwide protest has come and go, but have we achieved our goals? No, because looking at what is happening and the way things are going on in this country, there's a probability that the protest will commence soon. Reason being that we are all looking forward to Mr. President's speech to address the whole nation, the critical issues we are facing in this country. We are suffering and they need to understand that. We want the president to talk to us and now he has come out and dropped well scripted speech and now the people are still angry. Yet instead of the people to stop fighting one another and come together and face these people in higher position and demand for change, we are still busy fighting each other, fighting ourselves that Ibo must go, the Yoruba must go, the Aousa must go. And in case you didn't know, that is another bigger issue on ground right now because that is what the people are busy fighting for. They want the Igbo to go back to their place, they want the Aousa to leave the Yoruba land and the Igbo to, they want the Yoruba to leave their own land. Is that what we need at the moment? The nationwide protest didn't yield any positive results we were expecting. And now, the Igbo must go is another thing we have to decide. In order to make sure that things go back the way they were, we need to focus and make sure that this is what we want to achieve in this country. A lot of people criticize President Bola Metinobu's speech, his live broadcast. Leaked scripts or not, none of what he said reflects on what we are facing in this country and that is the one thing we need to consider. But he didn't even address the brutality the protester faced from the security agencies and that says a lot. These people don't care about us. But surprisingly, one of the great people we were looking forward to see to come up and fight for the people is no one but Wale Shoenka. He also condemned Mr. President's speech. But looking at the way things are going, like I said, these people are not showing any sign that they care about us. And that is what we have to be doing as one. We need to stand together as one. Fight these people in higher positions. That is the only way to win this fight. A lot were discussed and I just decided to brief you on what to expect in this particular video. Kindly take a listen and leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it and don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more updates. Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Joining us now is Ojinika Ojiokwe with stories trending around the world. Hello, good morning, good morning, Dr. Matt. How are you this morning? Good morning. Perfect. Good morning, Ayo. Good morning. Perfect. Perfect. Good morning, Rufai. Perfect. I hope you all had a great weekend. Well, all right. Well, good morning to you viewers. Let's begin what's trending by taking reactions to President Bola Ahmed Tinbu's national broadcast on Sunday, where he appealed to the organizers of the end bad governance protest to suspend further protests and create room for dialogue. The president reeled out policy reforms, which he said will address the needs of the protesters and urged Nigerians to work together in reshaping the nation. The president also condemned those who have taken on due advantage of the protests to threaten any section of the country, stating that there is no place for ethnic bigotry in Nigeria. Nigeria requires all hands on deck and it owes all, regardless of age, party, tribe, religion or all that divides to work together reshaping our destiny as a nation. So those who have taken due advantage of this situation to threaten any section of this country be warned. The law will catch up with you. There is no place for ethnic bigotry or such threats in the Nigeria we seek to build. Meanwhile, the hashtag Igbo Must Go protest continues to fester on social media. A recent X Spaces conversation tagged Yoruba Ronu Space, led by purported Yoruba influencers, called for an Igbo Must Go protest. One of the contributors stated that Igbos are disrespecting their traditional rulers and leaders have no right owning land in Lagos. We need to protest. We need to come out and protest. Igbo are disrespecting our institution, they disrespect our traditional ruler, they disrespect all our all our headers. 
and they can't take it in their own space. Therefore, we must not fold our hands. I just have to tell everybody this. This protest, your ego must go and the scrap of the of unitary system is a must and it's coming and it's going to be loud. It's going to, whoever that wants to die should go and die. It's in our space. This is the, our heritage. This is the land our father fought for. And we will not allow anybody, no matter how many acres of land you buy, it is our land. And your land, that your purchased land have expired time. Therefore, you cannot claim ownership. So, thank you, uh, uh, Madam Ajoke. Now, this is horrible, condemnable. But also, an Igbo influencer named Nongso responded to this particular video. Let's take a listen to what he said. Monday and I seen the Bussin Alegos, and all by new and invest in Alegos. Alegos may make millions today as internally generated revenue. One and all by Ibu Dibo. When I estimate the name when I'm Lagos, or the hundred, Dibo, when ninety nine. Near Robon and Anul in Alegos. Near Robon and the Rebel Swamp areas, a royal factory, royal industry, royal company. Near Robon Madole, Media. In fact, Lagos and I think people now only the the Lagos who are Lagosians. The governor of the Lagos who the Lagos. Some who are Lagos. To do what are Lagos. No, come to him again now. Oh, this conversation is all coming after an ex account. Lagos Media, a page claiming to be proclaiming the virtues of Lagos last week, gave Igbos living and doing business in Lagos and other southwest states. 30 days to vacate. Let's uh, read that uh, tweet. It's been deleted, since been deleted. And they wrote, Lagosians and every Southwest stakeholder should prepare for the massive protest of hashtag Igbo must go on the 20th to 30th of August. They have one month from now to leave and relocate from their businesses from all Southwest states. We urge all Yorubas leaving the Southeast to return home. I mean, this particular issue is still going on on social media. Like I said, this occurred over the weekend. I'm glad President Bola Ahmed Tinubu actually, you know, highlighted that in his national broadcast. It's condemnable, and I thought it was important to highlight both accounts, including the uh, Igbo non-so influencer who said that, you know, Igbo's own 99% of Lagos. This rhetoric must stop. We know what happened in Rwanda. We know what happened during the Civil War. Yeah. It is rhetorics like this that begin to cause nation disaster, national disaster. Dr. Abati. Okay, it's good you cited the example of uh, Rwanda. Mm -hmm. Now, the genocide in Rwanda between the Hutus and the Tutsis uh, in the 90s, early 90s in Rwanda was as a result of this kind of rhetoric, ethnic mm -hmm. aid. And the media in Rwanda at the time also played a very bad part. There's a book on it about the role of the media in the... Uh, ethnic implosion in uh, Rwanda. So Nigerians should learn a lesson from it. Close our home. Um, Mr. Dari Babarinsa has written a book on the crisis in, uh, I think, on those state in the Second Republic, where there was a lot of ethnic hate, you know, ethnic violence, people, you know, uh, using the media to drive up, uh, you know, uh, uh, antagonism within the society. And now we are in the age of, uh, of uh, not radio, but in the age of uh, the social media. So what was posted by Lagos Media was irresponsible, utterly condemnable. And I think it's important that Governor uh, Sonwulu of Lagos has already condemned it and has said that the Lagos State Government has nothing to do with it. Now, President Tinubu in his speech also struck the right note by addressing ethnic bigotry. This is a country that is built on the beauty of its diversity, on the beauty of its uh, uh, sense of inclusion. But politics, religion, are some of the centrifugal forces that have divided us. So the president said, the people who are behind this, the government will make sure that they face the rule of law because this is unacceptable. However, let's make this point. Uh, this is a note of caution to all of us in Nigeria. Ethnic hate brings nobody any good. Absolutely. The gentleman, the uh, my, the gentleman, the uh, you called him the Igbo man or something. No, so his name. No, so Twitter. No, so who spoke and said that look, Igbos are part of the building of Lagos. 
Is it not in the same Lagos that uh, in the First Republic, Igbos were in the uh, 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 Lagos, uh, you know, assembly? In the same Lagos. Lagos uh, House of Assembly, Lagos House of Chiefs, uh, Mbono, GK, and many of these Igbos, they had their career in this Lagos. Is it not in this same Lagos that uh, Chief Emmanuel uh, Mwanyawu, now of Bezer Memory, set up businesses? Is it not in this Lagos, same Lagos, that Chief Odimegu Ojuku uh, uh, of the Belasca Lodge had uh, a, a thriving transportation business? In other words, it would be wrong to say that in terms of the economic prosperity of uh, Lagos and of even the Southwest generally, that is only the effort of the Yorubas. When it is convenient, Yoruba people will say, oh, the West is developed because we are Libra, because we are accommodating. The people are now saying Yoruba for the Yorubas, Igbos for uh, the East for the Easterners, they are absolutely wrong. Yeah. If Igbos leave Lagos, you will not be able to repair your car All right. because there will be no, uh, there will be no, uh, uh, spare parts dealers. Yeah. If Ebos leave Lagos, you will not be able to buy electronics. If Ebos leave Lagos, half of the banks in Lagos will leave. So we are interdependent and people should just be careful. And they should remember the rhetoric that led to the civil war of 1967 to 70. I love that you raised that. And you also raised a very uh, valid point, which is the people that are behind this ethnic bigotry should be pointed out and they should be arrested. They need yeah. to be made examples of. But also, people are saying, I mean, do you remember during the 2023 elections? Yes, we do. That's last We time. have people in President Bola Tinubu also stoking these ethnic bigotry. People pulled up by Onanuga's tweet from 2023 where he said, let 2023 be the last time of Igbo interference in Lagos politics. Let there be no repeat in 2027. Lagos is like an Anambra, Imu, any Nigerian state. It is not no man's land, not federal capital territory. It is Yoruba land. Mind your business. We have to continue to call this out. This is unacceptable. This is wrong. And we cannot afford a nation at war at this time. I mean, the protesters are out on the street. President Bola Ametin will need to make an example of these people that have been stoking ethnic hate in Nigeria. Let me take a, another reaction. Well, many Nigerians have reacted to President Bola Ametinibu's national broadcast, including Nobel laureate, Professor Wale Shoinka, who in an opinion piece titled The Hunger March as, U as Universal Mandate, said that President Tinubu's speech on Sunday failed to address the continuing deterioration of the state's seizure of protest management, adding that the use of bullets and tear gas on Nigerians protesting against economic hardship is an abuse of state power. The playwright went further to state that the manner in which security operatives treated the protesters condemns the nation to a seemingly unbreakable cycle of resentment and reprisals. His statement reads in part, the tragic response to the ongoing hunger marches in parts of the nation and for which notice was served continues a retrogression that takes the nation even further back than the deadly culmination of the of the watershed and SARS protest. It evokes pre-independence, that is, colonial acts of disdain, a passage that induced the late stage pioneer, Hubert Ogunde's folk opera, Bread and Bullets, ending that nationalistic serial persecution and proscription by the colonial government. I mean, Bole Shoinka is speaking at this time. Uh, Rufai, I'd love for you to juxtapose both stories. Um, Just the focus. Like <laughs> so, number one, please. In the words of Oyeka Wedu, one love keep us together. Enough of all this ethnic rhetoric. You guys need to understand that this ethnic rhetoric is a delusion that the politicians are using to divide us. Aren't we ashamed of ourselves? We are hungry, we are poor. These politicians, when they are looting, they don't think of the tribe they are from. Look at President Tinubu's cabinet. There are people from every part of the country. The belly full and we hungry. We the hungry men are the angry men fighting each other. And like Franz Fanon said, oppressed people who want to oppress others. So this resource, like we're talking about England, yeah. that people are fighting for and so they are desecrating Lagos. 
It's because we are all hungry. So why don't we just coalesce together and fight the bad government that is destroying our lives rather than fighting each other? We are one. There is no pure light anywhere in the world. Yorubas have married people, Yorubas have married Yoruba. Yorubas have invested in Ebola and Ebola people have invested in Yoruba land. One way or the other. I have seen Yoruba people that speak Igbo like no man's business. But they have been there for so many years. I have seen Igbo people that speak Yoruba like no man's business. How can we come together and fight our real enemies, which is the political class that steal our commonwealth every day? Igbo man, the Yoruba man is not your problem. Yoruba man, the Igbo man is not your problem. And the political class that are destroying all of you and using this tribe and religious sentiment to destroy you, those are your real problems. Please, come together. Secondly, as regards Professor Wolishenka, what he said is spot on. Right. And kudos to Professor Wolishenka. Nigeria has built a state where violence reigns supreme. You know they were talking about violence happening. We are now seeing this role the state is playing in violence. You saw how people were tear gas. Yes. You saw how bullets were shot. People were masked. Till today, you don't know people that shot in Abuja. Live bullets on the ground. And it's a mindset where we think you use violence to use up the other person. So that's what the state believes yes. in. And what the guy is saying, we've built a state where we cannot manage protests without using violence. It's a sad reality. We all saw the UK here where they were using batons and forces yes. to charge at people. Yes. Did you hear that anybody, they fired life bullets? No. no, but you know, we have enthroned a, a state that has no respect for its citizenry. You, you impoverish the people, then you are so quick to use life bullets on them. Yeah. Not even hot water cannon. So that's the kind of state we built. And that's why I'm happy when the guy said it. Yes. Because if when he protested, with them still in 2012. Jonathan had said police officers on the street and army should go out there and shoot them. Maybe some of them will not be alive today. Absolutely. But, but you know, because, because yes, and that's why that. he made that point. And that's why he said it's a replica of the play of Abato Gundi, Bread and Bullets, which was exactly how the colonial used to treat us. You see, the sad thing Oji I can't understand is that we complain that the colonial masters treated us so bad. We are treating ourselves worse than the colonial All right. Treatment. You know, he made so many points. He even said that hunger protests are not peculiar to Nigeria. The nation's security agency should emulate alternative models and, you know, civilized, uh, in civilized and advanced um, uh, uh, security intervention. But I would like to also, you know, touch on protests in the north. If I take um, uh, this tweet, I'll go to that. Protests in the north. This is a response to Shoyinka's um, message. Josh wrote, uh, Shoyinka's criticism underscores the importance of peaceful protest management. The need for security forces to exercise restraint and respect the rights of citizens to peaceful to peacefully express their grievances. His comments also serve as a call for the Nigerian government to learn from international examples and to prioritize the well-being and safety of its citizens during times of unrest. In Kano State, protests uh, escalated into violence. A policeman was captured in a video openly threatening to kill protesters. The incident occurred after the governor of the state, Abba Yusuf, imposed a 24-hour curfew on Friday. Despite the curfew, some protesters defied the restrictions and continued to challenge the security forces on the streets. While in the video, the officer was heard urging the protesters who were throwing stones to stop. Otherwise, he will be tempted to kill. Let's take a look. In another video, a policeman was seen shooting at protesters in broad daylight. Let's take a look. Alright, I have a 
picture of that police officer. If we can pull that picture up, Ayo, before uh, you know, we take this other story. Yes. Also, an uh, issue in the north. If we can have a, a picture of that police officer, that's the picture that we have there. I mean, people are saying he looks like a bandit, a Boko Haram <laughs> bandit. And people were even trying to justify it because they were saying, well, he was trying to stop the protesters so who were after. throwing stones at, you know, uh, moving vehicles and stuff like that. Stone, and gun. stone and guns, that's what they said. But I thought it was important to highlight the photo of that yes. police officer for security agencies. But you know, we talked about the Kaduna State Governor last week on Friday and the reasons why these issues continue to fester in the North. It's because of poverty, it's yes. because of lack of education. In Sokoto State, we saw a boy who had stones. He said that he was going to throw it at the Governor of Kaduna State. Let's take a look. this is very very sad and if that video of that young ch um, child with stones in his or her hands doesn't move you then you know i don't know what else to say if the um, our leaders this is a call to leaders and when people come out to protest it is often tainted as oh they want to take us out of government is politically motivated what manner of politics motivated that young child the politics is hunger that people are upset and angry this is reality look at where she said anything they find to eat is what they eat they don't have food and so when the people are angry you provoke them to anger when they're hungry you provoke them to anger and this anger is expressed in different ways now going back to the previous stories in terms of the, the conduct of the police and by the way People in the criticism of the president's address said that he ought to have addressed and condemned policemen that's, who, that's, were, who did not follow protocol. That's what he should have done. Yes. He, he yeah. ought to have put a, a strong stance yes. that we protect, we, we, are, we stand with our policemen and our servicemen, but we also condemn any force. I would like to see the police protocol for handling peaceful protests. We sort of saw it before the protest happened because we saw policemen who were practicing as if they were going to war. And people said, if only we had this kind of action, we won't have Boko Haram. There will be no Sambisa Forest mm. because you were going to, and it wasn't as, and I, and I made a slight comment that, oh, I hope it's because they were showing the show, the, the, how, how strong they would be in protecting the citizens. Well, we all know that's not true. They were doing it to say that anything that happens, we would, what was the difference between that and what um, Asari Dokubo said, that you receive water, water, you become, that was what, they were, that was what was being demonstrated. Right. It would be great for us to see what the protocol is for handling peaceful protests if the police does have that. Absolutely. So that if there's a breach of that, we all can collectively call it out. But when you see in broad daylight the impunity and the audacity to shoot at citizens who are who are largely unarmed because and even have the boldness to threaten death, they can't even use you know um, 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 rubber bullets or things that don't have to kill. It's just the sanctity, the lack yeah. of sanctity of human life yeah. in Nigeria. And that's why I said earlier that. The life of every Nigerian matters. Right. And so if by speaking or doing anything it takes not to lose one life, we become insensitive. So it's only until we hear hundreds of people have died that we begin to make noise. Yeah. If one or two people die, okay, another casualty has happened. The police needs to sit up. So in addition to the IG coming out to say that, oh, his men were, you know, he should also speak yeah. to this evil Absolutely. that is happening. And thank you for putting the work and making it easier for them to identify, identify that policeman, the policeman who was well. shooting at people. But I also wanted to continue to highlight the plight of the people in the north as well. I mean, last week I tried to take this video. It was a video of protesters that were standing in front of former president Muhammad Buhari's home and they were burning tires and they were upset. Let's take a look at that video. <laughs>
screaming enough is enough but you know the comments that we have seen on twitter you know people have been saying that president muhammad Buhari really you know was thinking that he was loved in his home state and but you can see the crowd out there that was his home in daura but you know the president and founder of anap foundation anap jets and founder sambik ibtc atedo peter side has called for calm you. I know you guys all remember when Atedo Kita's side came out during the NSAS protest, like some sort of premonition. He had begged the young people to go home. And it just seems like it's happening again. I mean, we don't know the end of this protest. We know that in Ojota, Lagos State, some protesters called off, uh, called the, uh, for the suspension of the demonstration until October 1st. The protesters say that since President Bola Ametinbu has addressed the nation, little time should be given to assess all the proposition. The protesters were addressed by the police. As I've decided to call it off, and the president has spoken, and they are looking forward to the president's uh, meeting the demands they have presented before him. Thank you very much. So, in view of that, the, there's to be no more gathering here or anywhere. Any of such gardening is unlawful and illegal. And if such gardening exists, we are going to apply the full weight of the law. Dr. Batin, a, a quick round of work. Very quickly, I mean, uh, at Ojota yesterday, yes. the protesters with the police, as we have seen, said they were calling off a strike. They've said they are meeting today mm -hmm. at 11, the Congress of Protesters, mm -hmm. to take a final uh, decision. Yeah. In terms of impact, we have seen banks have opened. Petrol stations have opened, some normalcy right. has returned. Right. The point is that perhaps if the president had spoken earlier, yeah.